Here we're going to do a proof from Discrete Mathematics, um, the early learning of how to do proofs. This one is a proof by contradiction. So let's look at the uh, theorem first. If x, let x and y be integers. If x and y satisfy this equation right here, at least one of x and y is odd. Okay, now I tell you what, if you have this idea of oddness and evenness going on in a proof, Sometimes it's best to look at contradiction or contraposition. In this case, we're going to use contradiction. So if I want to prove that A is true or prove that at least one of X and Y is odd, I have to first start out that A, well, how does it say this? To prove A is true, show that not A is false. Okay, so I start out with the idea that not A. So that means that if I do not that one of X and Y is odd, that this can't be true. So that creates a super uh, contradiction. So a rule of thumb is, now this is from my class, page 59 in our book, but not necessarily, you know, for your class. To prove a statement A by contradiction, this is how you begin your proof. Begin your proof with the following sentence. Suppose to the contrary that not A, then argue as in a direct proof until you reach a contradiction. Now somewhere along the line, when I prove not this, or start with that fact, then I will end up with something going wrong with that fact there. Okay, so if I think of this at least one of x and y is odd, I'm going to do a little thinking here. So if at least one of x and y is odd, that means x or y is true. x or y, where x is odd and y is odd. So this statement here means that one or the other is odd. So what's the negation of that? Negating x or y. This is how my class's textbook says negative. So your class may be different, so don't panic. So the negative of that uh, simplifies to not x and not y. So if this is the case, how I start out this problem is assuming that both, both x and y are what? They're even. So this means that I start the proof with x and y being even numbers. Okay, now notice I haven't started the proof. I've just started thinking about, okay, well, I have to think about what does it mean to do not that, okay? Not that. All right, so here we go. Here's the start of my proof. Now, like in any proof, you want to start out talking about the letters, the variables that you have, and what kind of numbers they are. Talk about the domain. So we're going to let x and y, sorry, my mind gets ahead here, x and y be what kind of numbers? Well, what does the problem say? They're integers. So I state that. Let x and y be integers, because that gives me the groundwork to start on. and assume both x and y are even. There's the, the start of the contradiction. If x and y are even, I'm going to write down what does that mean. By definition, if x and y are even, that means uh, there exists integers k1 and k2 such that x equals 2 times an integer and y equals 2 times the other integer. And we don't know what those integers are, but that's okay. But this is what you do. You start out with what you're given. Assume what you're supposed to assume based on the fact that this is contradiction. And then use the definition of the fact that they're even to move forward. Just like in other proofs, we have this relationship that we know about. x plus 3y equals 153. So we want to show that this is not true as well. Because if this is not true and this is not true, then this whole statement is true. Or I guess, yeah, that's right. Okay. So let's start with uh, consider 
3x plus 5y, and let's see what happens. So if I do my substitution, 3 times 2k1 plus 5 times 2k2, and uh, I'm going to simplify that a little bit, and I get 6k1 plus 10, sorry, 10k2. And uh, what, what I'm going to do here, I notice that I can factor out, I could notice that here, I can factor out a 2 out of both, but I can write this as 3k1 plus 5k2, which is very convenient. Now, according to the theorem, this is supposed to equal, because x and y uh, um, share this relationship, according to the theorem, this is supposed to equal 153, but this is a contradiction. Why? Because I can write 153 as 2 times a number, but I have to add 1 to it in order for that to happen. Well, I think we're all pretty clever. We know that 153 is what kind of number? It's odd. But here, this is stating that it's even. Because I have 2 times a number is an odd number. That's actually false. But there's your contradiction. Because 2, and I believe the number here is uh, 76, if I'm not mistaken. 2 times 76 plus 1 shows that 153 is not even, but in fact odd. So again, I'm trying to prove that if x and y satisfy that equation, then x and y is odd. So I assume not this. I assume both x and y is even. I plugged into this to show that it does not satisfy this, so there's where my contradiction occurs. So since I assume the opposite of this and this is also false, I can then state that this is actually true due to logic of mathematics. So now I'm going to conclude. Therefore, and you can use the dots, I don't care, it's fine. Therefore, if x and y, oh, good heavens, if x and y satisfy 3x plus 5y equals 153, then at least one of x or y needs to be odd. Because again, we assume that that doesn't have to be the case. We showed a contradiction, so the original statement has to be true.